Hi, I'm Janet Raptus, energy healer and intuitive development coach. And most Wednesdays at 5.30 Eastern, I come on, um, I do a live from my Facebook page covering topics on sensitivities, um, what it's like to be an empath, tips and tools, um, and also things um, around the topic of healing. And so something that's been coming up a lot in, in my world, I'm seeing in a lot of different directions. And, and what I have seen over the course of my own healing journey and over the course of doing thousands of healing sessions is that we have a tendency as humans to judge and repress our pain. And so I really wanted to talk about the importance of pain. Um, and I wanna put a little disclaimer in here um, as I start that I don't want to, in, in talking about what I'm talking about, I don't wanna minimize people who are experiencing chronic pain, who have been experiencing chronic pain for a long time. I know many people who have been actively working to heal some pain that they're experiencing and um, and and are still feeling a lot of pain. So I just wanna be really cognizant of um, people's journeys and know that everything I'm saying is um, how I see it as trends in what, um, in what presents, right? And so with pain, and I think that most of us could agree with this, is that we as humans have a tendency to want to numb pain. This is something that is taught to us from a very young age um, in many different ways. So if we have a headache or a fever, we're taught to take a pill to make it go away. And if we go to the doctor because something's wrong, the doctor will typically prescribe something to us to numb the pain. Um, we've also, on an emotional level, been taught to numb ourselves down um, through messages that we get, such as don't be so sensitive, get over it, um, it'll be fine soon, you're okay, even though obviously in that moment you're not okay. Um, and so we've been really shown that to feel pain is not really acceptable um, and that it's something to be avoided. And what happens, um, and a lot of you may be aware of this, is that if we don't feel the pain, if we continue to repress it, then eventually that pain will show up in other ways um, and in ways that are more serious. So for example, holding down, repressing, and holding in emotional pain over the course of years can potentially manifest as physical pain. Now, again, I wanna say that that's not a 100% rule, but it is a trend and something that I've noticed both personally in my healing journey and through working with others. So when we don't feel something, so let's say we grew up in a household where even if there's just mild trauma and you know and you know certainly if there is you know extreme physical, sexual, emotional abuse, verbal abuse that this is going to be even more so, right? But even in a in a home where maybe there's neglect um, or where there's a lack of love, right? And as a child, you may feel upset about this, but in your home, if your family is not comfortable with emotions, if they're not comfortable with you expressing that you're upset about something, let's say you cry because you want attention from your mom or your dad, and then your mom or your dad says, I'm busy right now, or shut up, or go to your room, or buck up, be strong, or any of those messaging, right? Over the course of time, you know, the, the initial the initial impetus to the cry was, I need attention, I need love. And it was an indication that something was not right, right? That something was not right in your world, that you needed something. And then instead of getting what you needed, you were, you know, pushed down. And what happens is we push that away, we push it away, we push it away, we numb it out. Um, and we get older and we learn even more savvy numbing techniques, right? We start to drink, smoke, um, you know, use our phones, um, binge watch Netflix, all of these things that will take us out of our pain and put our attention somewhere else. But if we can learn to approach pain, and again, I want to really say this in a place that this may not be always appropriate for everyone. and there are times when this is um, that when something else may be needed to look at. 
okay? But if we approach pain as a friend, and I know that this is gonna be really weird for some of you, but if we can look at it as a friend and know that the pain is showing up because it has something to share with us, that it has a message for us, that it wants to, it's a part of our body saying, hey, Janet, there's something going on here that's not right, and I, I need your attention, and so I'm going to get your attention because you've been ignoring me. You've been on your phone, or you've been drinking, or you've been doing whatever it was that you are doing, <laughs> instead of paying attention to me, instead of feeling this thing that's come up, or instead of taking care of this things that hap that's happening with you, right? I'm actually pointing to my shoulder. This is where my, my spot is, right? And, you know, and instead of paying attention to me, you've been doing these other things. And I really want to, I want you to pay attention to me. I have something to share with you. So over the course of time, this will become very multi-layered, right? So for me, for example, I've put a lot into my shoulders over the course of my lifetime. I have lodged trauma in there. I have lodged emotions in there. I have, you know, and, and as a result of that, the muscular system has sort of compensated for that. So over the course of time, this got worse and worse and worse. And as I started my healing journey, I really dove into the emotional aspect of it, which was amazing and helped to alleviate a lot of pain. Like actually going back, feeling my emotions from childhood, the emotions that I was not able to express, the emotions from my adolescence that I was not able to express, and you know, from other moments in my life, actually feeling those and allowing those emotions to roll through my body created a, a major shift. Um, but then there was still pain, right? And so then I had to look at the nervous system. My nervous system was still jacked up. I did some nervous system healing. Some of the pain went away. Some of it was still there. Then I had to now, I've been recently doing physical therapy so that I can rework um, my muscles. And that is actually helping a lot. So this was a, there's a lot of layers to this. And even as I do that, there's still energy flowing through it. There's still emotions flowing through it, right? So I might still have an emotional release after a physical therapy session because there's stuff that's still moving out. And it's an interesting thing though, as we, as I, you know, go through this process and how, as I've gone through this process before and as I've supported other people in going through this process, it's like as we actually accept the pain, as we turn to the pain and really start dialoguing with it, we can start to shift the dynamics of it. It's, it's like this paradox that once we accept the pain, once we appreciate the pain, then in many cases, we can start shifting the pain. We can open up that dialogue, that flow of energy between us and our bodies. Because our bodies, again, our bodies just want our attention. They just want us to know, I'm here and something's wrong. And, and really what this is, is showing you is times when the world or an experience has been out of alignment with you. So in the case of trauma, it's this experience of that's not right, but you weren't able to set a boundary. You weren't able to express what you needed to express, right? And your body is like, there's a book called Your Body Keeps the Score. I can't think of the name of the author right now, but it's um, it's a really good book. And um, another one that says your body, what is it by, another one by Gabor Mate that is something like when your body says no, I think. Both great books um, about how when that energy is not free to express, when the energy of emotions and trauma are not free to express through your body, then they have to, they have nowhere to go. And it constrict on an energetic level, what I see in my sessions is that it creates a constriction, right? It creates imbalance in your energy chakras, it keep, creates in constriction in your body, and over the course of time, that constriction will continue. If it's not released, it will continue to get tighter and tighter and tighter. Um, this is another thing that really contributes this, to this is the way that your nervous system works. So in an ideal situation, if you experience trauma, you're going to be like we, you're gonna be like the Impala in the wild. I'm gonna use this example that Peter Levin, um, use, Peter Levine uses in his book, Waking the Tiger, I think it's called, um, where in, we have been taught that there's um, fight or flight, 
right? And that it, those are the two responses that you have in trauma, but there's actually another response called a freeze response. And it's actually a very, very common response. It's the one that I experienced most in, in my trauma and that kept showing up in my life and that I wasn't even aware of until, I don't know, within the last five or six years, really. And, um, and what happens is, so you imagine like an impala in the wild and it, a cheetah is chasing after the impala and the impala is running, running, running. The cheetah is going after it. The cheetah is about to jump on it and kill it. And what the impala will do is it will drop. An opossum does this too, right? It plays dead. It will drop. It will play dead. As soon as its prey loses interest in it and goes off, it will jump up and it will actually start to shake. It will shake the trauma through its body and completely shake it out before then returning to its family, where it's then taken back into the herd. So we in our society don't typically, we're not able to have this full response. What often happens, so even imagine, and maybe you've had the experience of falling down and skinning your knee or something and getting back up and immediately people are like, are you okay, are you okay, are you okay, you're okay, you're okay, it's gonna be okay, it's gonna be okay, it's gonna be okay, right? People are telling you that you're gonna be okay. And it doesn't even really give you a chance to process out what just happened. And even something that's minor like that can cause your nervous system to not have a proper reaction. So imagine when something more drastic um, a car accident or um, a, 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 like in my case a rape um, when I was raped I went into freeze mode and I didn't know that that's what happened at the time but that freeze mode caused me to have a lot of shame right I didn't fight back I didn't yell enough right I yelled a little bit but I didn't yell enough at some point I just froze and I didn't know that my body was doing what it physiologically needed to do in that moment and I didn't have the opportunity because I didn't know how to work with my nervous system and because I wasn't in the setting to go through a full response to actually I mean I, what I did was I checked out I checked out, I didn't want to feel my emotions, I immediately went into denial about it, I shifted the story in my head so that I wouldn't have to feel it, right? So I wouldn't have to feel it. And it all got stuck in there. A lot of it got stuck in my arm when I was doing some nervous system rewiring work. One of the things that came up and through was, um, get the F off of me, I like screamed it, you know, and that was something that had been really trapped in me. Um, yes, Melissa, I got that from that. <laughs> the Impala story is really powerful. It's something, it really shows how we've really thwarted our body's ability to experience its biological responses, its physiological responses. And so when our body then years later is like, knocking knocking going hey hey you know a lot of tra trauma can lead to autoimmune diseases um and other chronic conditions um that um that as soon as you and again this is not 100 percent. i don't want to discount anybody who's having a different experience we all have our own experiences but this is what i've seen a lot is that when that energy doesn't get to move through and it gets stuck over and over and over again, then it creates these imbalances that show up as illnesses and diseases. And then if um, what I've witnessed is when a lot of people have done emotional and nervous system work, along with other modalities, energy healing can also be very supportive, but really the emotional and the nervous system rewiring, they start to experience relief in their symptoms and can even experience full cures and I know people who have cured many uncurable diseases through doing things like that and part of that is because it's a dialogue with the body you're paying attention what are the emotions in there can't how can I express them let me feel this thing that I've been not feeling for so long let me work with my biology and my body in such a way that it honors it and that it allows this nervous system, my nervous system to rewire, to become healthy and more resilient again. This, this sort of idea of 
befriending the pain and letting the pain share this information with you and then re responding in turn to the pain can go a long way for healing. And why I wanted to address it was because I think that there is a really pervasive, and I mean, even for me, y'all, I've been doing really deep healing work for about 15 or 16 years now. And I still catch myself wanting to push something away or going through a period of time where I'm like, I can't deal with that right now and ignoring it until I'm like, okay, I can't ignore it anymore. Um, I try not to. I try to be way more proactive. I try to be in dialogue with my body as much as I can. Um, but it's like a programming, right? It's like a programming. And I, I think a huge piece of this for us is to shift this perspective and <laughs> Amanda saying, let me feel this thing. It's like shifting this perspective so that we can come to it with more compassion for ourselves, right? Showing up for ourselves with more compassion, more love. Hey, what's going on? What are you sharing with me? What do I need to know? Making it more of a habit so that even that in the habituated action of it, of I have pain, what is it sharing mean? I'm not saying like don't ever take an Advil again. I mean, if you have like debilitating menstrual cramps and you have to go to a meeting, you might need to take an Advil, right? But you could also at some point tune into why are these cramps coming up? Why are my cramps, so this is a personal story, <laughs> why are the cramps so debilitating, right? Once I did a massive healing on, um, on, on the rape experience that I shared with you earlier, it wasn't the full story, but it was a huge chunk of it, my debilitating cramps went away. That was, that was what was coming up there. Um, and one way that my body was showing me that I needed to do some healing. So, and that won't be the same for everybody, but it's, you know, taking that time, even if you do have to do something where you suppress, where you can come back later and, and tune in and meditate and connect with that part of your body and allow that part of your body to share with you what wants to be shared. And to do that, and I've, I've spoken to this a little bit before, but to do that, it, it can be very simple. And, and for some of you, it might take a little bit longer. For some of you, it would be really easy. Many of us have had a lot of trauma and connecting with the body can be really hard, right? Because as a result of trauma, we become out of body, so to speak. But if you can start to cultivate the practice where you take a little bit of time to go within, where you, let's use the example of menstrual cramps here. Um, though this could be for anything, even, you know, <laughs> so if you're a man or if you're in menopause or whatever. Um, so, you know, bringing your hands to, the, your, to your belly over your ovaries um, and just closing your eyes and dropping into your body and bringing your attention into that area and, and, and sharing love and saying, I'm here, I'm here, I'm listening. What do you want to share with me? And allowing your body to share in whatever way, your body's gonna share with you in whatever way is easiest for you to understand. So if you're a very visual person, you might get a visual of what's going on. You might see a word or hear a word. You might just get a feeling about something or a knowingness about something. So just know that whatever comes up for you is right for you. And it might initially just be something that doesn't even make sense. And that's okay too. I recommend, you know, jotting it down in your journal. I connected with my ovaries today and um, I saw a picture of a towel being twisted. And <laughs> that's probably just what it feels like. Um, but that's what your body's relaying to you, right? And just write it down. And then the next time you do it, go back in. And maybe you do it when you're not in pain. Maybe you go in and say, you know, what do you have to share with me? And maybe you get a different image. Or maybe you get a different sensation. And you can start to, as you do it more and more, and, and you're befriending your body in this whole experience, 
as you do it more and more, you'll start to understand your body better. You'll have a better rapport with your body. And as you can, if you can come into acceptance with it, and this is a huge one, and it's really hard. Um, I have a, a girlfriend who has experienced pain for most of her life. Um, she's done a lot of really deep healing work really deep healing work and um, she really had this where she was able to internalize this experience of acceptance recently and it's pre it's created a really profound shift for her now this is something that will happen when it happens right we can't force acceptance but we can we can be willing when i first started to going going to 12 steps and one of the things that they say there is um you know, are you willing to be willing? Like if you can't be in acceptance yet, are you willing to get there? And if you're not willing to get there, are you willing to be willing? So just, you know, starting that intention, holding that intention, like do I have a willingness to, to explore this concept of acceptance of the pain? Do I have a willingness to see if I can befriend this pain? Um, and if you hold that intention, then you'll start to notice shifts. And when you're ready for it, it'll happen and it will be one of those things, it could potentially be one of those things that feels like a miracle, but it also has to do with this intention that you've been holding. So um, I would love to know if you guys have, if any of you have any questions, whether you're watching now or later, um, or anything that you wanna share about an experience that you've had with pain or with healing. Um, I know that, you know, there's so many different types of pain and it, it really it can take a lifetime to heal it. Um, I started very much with, um, you know, working with the emotional aspect of it and and um, and the energetic aspect of it, and um, it was super profound for me. And um, but it and and it alleviated some of the physical pain, right? and then having to explore also just different routes. And, and that's something else to know is that there's just going to be, um, sometimes it's like putting a puzzle together, right? Which pieces, which healing pieces fit into my puzzle? And, and sometimes um, they're very obvious and sometimes they're a little more elusive. And it's, you know, it, it's remembering that we're walking through this journey and that if we're present to the journey, the the insights will be revealed to us. They really will. Um, so I will, I'm not seeing any questions or any comments. Um, I'll just leave you all with that. If you think of something later, please let me know. Um, if you are somebody who is experiencing pain, um, you know, know that I am sending you love and healing and that I, I hope that you are able to, in whatever way is right for you, experience relief from that pain. Um, one last thing I'll say that sort of reminded me, and I haven't said it this way before, is this expression that maybe a lot of you heard is that what we resist persists. And I think that that is um, a part, a piece of this, it's one side of this coin, right? And um, and the other side is the acceptance, the surrender. Um, that can be really, really hard sometimes, especially when there's pain involved. But know that if, if you can, pain in and of itself is a resistance. It's a constriction and a resistance. So if we can, the more we can get into that and the more we can release that resistance, the... I don't really want to say easier. The more fluid the experience can be for you, I guess is, is the way I want to put it. Um, and it might be easier, um, but it might be really hard too. So I just want to honor that. And I just want to honor all of your journeys with it, whatever you're healing from. I think that, um, and I just hope that this, um, that this will help you to, to look at your pain in a different way. So, Thank you all so much. Um, have a really, really wonderful week and I, um, I'll see you next week. And remember, if you guys have any questions or anything that you want me to address, feel free to send that to me. Um, oh, thank you, Melanie. Yes, pain itself as a resistance. Um, yes, thank you all so, so much. 
Have a really wonderful week and I'll see you soon. Bye.